Welcome back, Lumberjacks. Uh, we already went through the season statistics, the finalized se season statistics. Uh, we went through the conference standings. We went through the bowl games, the interesting ones. So we could just jump into the offseason now. So we ranked first in pass yardage allowed, top five in rush yards. Obviously, we earned a bowl bid, finished the season with 75-plus field goal percentage. We had one first-team All-American, uh, All-Conference, I should say, ranked top 10 in points allowed, top 10 in red zone percentage, 100% red zone efficiency. We had a second team all conference. All right, so we don't get offered an extension on our contract, which is kind of surprising. We give an extension to our offensive coordinator, who is okay, Peter Charles. He'll be staying for another season, but we did lose our old coach, uh, White. We will be getting a new defensive coordinator, Brock Atkinson. We did win nine games, so it's not a surprise that we ended up uh, losing our defensive coordinator. That was the strong uh, strong side of our team, the strong group. So we already went over who we're losing. We should be losing 13 seniors. We don't have anyone transferring out, so that's good. But as a rehash, you know, we lose Dickerson, we lose Crawford, Jefferson Steele, Neff, Austin Wright, Watson, Gamble, Holland, which was Jeremy Barnes. Uh, Epperson and Roberson, Aubrey, um, definitely uh, three, four, five players that were impact players for us. Still, you could definitely include him in there too. Um, you know, we lose some players, but we're not losing a bulk of our team. A bulk of our team is coming back for next season. What I've been hoping for is uh, we get transfer requests. I really hope we do because that's why I purposely saved some scholarships to get some transfers in. We'll see. And then obviously we didn't get anyone drafted. Transfer requests. Oh, nice, okay. We get a middle linebacker. We get a cornerback. Obviously all these guys are, are gonna be with us. And we get a, actually Clint McDougal from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Um, well, let's see how he is. He has some speed. 87 and 83. That's okay. Uh, looks like he's nothing special, but shh, we'll take him. We get a left guard. Uh, yeah, that's what I was hoping for, was to get some, uh, some transfers in, and we did. We got some transfers, and they're all from our, uh, from our pipeline states, Louisiana and Texas. So, nice. We won't be able to play with any of these guys coming in. Uh, we'll have to wait till next season, but that gives them time to come in and get to know the system, develop under our coaching staff, and become impact players in uh, a couple seasons. So yes, we're accepting all of you. And I think that's all of our scholarships right there. Zero scholarships remaining. So, I mean, we didn't have anyone to recruit. Our last commit was Ernie Miller. Uh, like I said, if you want any of uh, your names on the, any of these guys, any of these players, just let me know. Otherwise, I have randomized names that I already have prepared for all these guys. And I'll, uh, I'll post that in the next episode, what, what their new names are going to be. And in the next episode, I'll also highlight basically the players that will end up playing or starting. So I think Aaron Walker, depending on how... Uh, how he looks at strong safety and at middle linebacker, or outside linebacker. I'm going to check what he is in terms of rating. Uh, he most likely will be starting somewhere on the defense. Conference prestige, we are a C-, minus, so we're ninth in the country overall. CUSA is actually number one ahead of the ACC, which I would think would be the strongest. But they're so strong that you know they have some teams that are, aren't ranked right now because... Well, they had to kind of go through a gauntlet, but Conference USA is actually really strong as well. MAC is up there, Big Ten, Mountain West Conference, and uh, down here at the bottom, obviously our conference, American Conference, and Pac-12. And then you have the Big 12 and Sun Belt at six and seven. And see, everything is still pretty trash. We have locked in for the rest of the dynasty. We can recruit two stars. And then if we have another good season next season, we'll move up to three-star and we lock in three-star players. So our class is actually dead last in the country. We brought in 21-star players 
and we're officially a two-star prestige, but we're dead last in the country because we, we couldn't bring in any two stars, three stars, four stars, five stars. Uh, we haven't built the program up enough. One of my favorite parts of this entire offseason is always position changes. I like to see uh, what the new team is going to look like and who I can shift where, especially on defense because we run a 4 2 5. I like to have speed at every position, so defensive ends can be converted to a defensive tackle. Outside linebacker and middle linebackers can be converted to defensive end. Um, strong safeties can be converted to linebacker, you know, so on and so forth. Quarterback we're good at for now. Um, we definitely will be needing one soon. Running back, it's kind of weak. We're going to have, obviously we're not going to have McDougal. We're going to have Johnson and Ford and Darby. And uh, otherwise it's, it's looking pretty weak there. Don't really need to shift anybody, I don't think. We did add a receiver, but we're definitely going to need receivers. Let's see, catching. So Mosley's the best on the team now. Spectacular catch. Yeah, Mosley was a, and he's good, you know, with the ball in his hands out of the jet sweep. In terms of route running, ooh, Mosley's easily our best guy. Looks like uh, Mosley's going to be the f the feature. Uh, wide receiver of this offense tight end. It's pretty weak. We have uh, Foster Darren Robinson is our main guy at a uh, defensive end. We're gonna move Skyler over to uh, Right in Defensive tackle is okay for now. So no worries. We're probably gonna end up redshirting these two guys So they have a, a year to kind of develop, check middle linebacker. So we have Joshua Luke coming in. Mike Rouse, I'll most likely keep him at cornerback. Let's see. Yeah, we'll keep him at cornerback. Yeah, I figured Aaron Walker would probably end up making a pretty good middle linebacker. We'll ask him to put on weight, but I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. So now we have Aaron Walker, Rodney Young. I don't think he can move to defensive end, huh? Oh, he's actually a better defensive end than he is. So... Yeah, we'll have it that way. Free safety. We have three seniors. So Aaron Walker is going to end up being our starter at middle linebacker, uh, which is what I wanted. We're going to ask him to gain some weight, but I mean, 84 speed. This guy's going to be the 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 hopefully the star player of this recruiting class. Good tackling, decent power, uh, uh, hit power. Obviously, we're not expecting him to uh, be playing the run that well. His pursuit's okay, play recognition's okay. He's decent in coverage for a linebacker, so I think he'll end up being a decent player overall. I'm per I'm gonna user him because of that speed that he has. So it's training results time. Let's see who jumps up. Aubrey is our best player on the team with uh, Wiggs and Nelson behind him, but let's go position by position. So Attaway goes up to a 77. Plaster actually went up six points. Uh, when he's a senior, he could possibly be in the 80s, so that'll be good. Um, I wish Attaway would have went up a little bit more. Let's see if his accuracy went up. Oh, it's still 79, so we're still going to struggle. But uh, at least he went up. That's one positive. Halfback Gus, our boy Gus, goes up five points. He's now a 72, and he gets better. Uh, we have Clint McDougal, who's a transfer. We're not going to have him, but he's looking like he's going to be a decent player. Fred Ford goes up four, and Walker goes up six. Fullback, we only have Lawson, plus five. Mosley and Lott go up four, as does Brooks. So those are basically our top four wide receivers right there. Bearden, Brooks, Lott, and Mosley. Mosley's probably going to get most of the looks, but Lott does have some speed to him. Let's check out the route running, because that's what's going to determine whoever. Yeah, our route running is still trash. Mosley's still our best guy. He's our best guy in traffic, even though Brooks is okay. Uh, Mosley's now a 91 spec catch. Lott is not very good at uh, those spectacular catches. However, Lott has the best hands on the team, so... 
Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to put a, more of a focus on the passing game in this upcoming season. We get Foster with a plus six, so we need to involve Foster as much as possible as well. In terms of uh, our offensive line, we have Chambers go up to 76. Left guard is a 71. Uh, oh, never mind. So most likely it's going to be the new guy that's starting, or it's going to be newbie. Regardless, left guard is a weakness. Uh, we have our center go up plus six to 71. Good stuff there. Right guard is a 77, Greg Hall. Right tackle is a 75 after a plus four. Left end, Darren Robinson goes up plus five. He's getting better. At uh, right end, our new starter is going to be Skyler with Young backing him up. A converted middle linebacker. We're going to ask him to gain a little bit more weight. But uh, yeah, Skyler is our, is our starter. Which uh, I expected. At defensive tackle, there was no competition. It was going to be Murphy and Maddox regardless. But they go up plus five and plus six. Left outside linebacker, Hippolyte wins the uh, competition. Uh, but we'll have Luke for next season. He's a transfer, so we'll be getting him next season. And uh, Mark, uh, Marvin Gray will be the backup to Hippolyte. Cornerback, we have... Wow, Gibbs jumps up five. Oh, Okay, he's a, he's a transfer. That's why. Okay. So it's going to be Valier and Barlow as our starters on the outside with Finley as a, the nickelback and uh, our new guy, Rouse. Jordan Aubrey goes up five. He's the best player on the team. And we have Isaiah Perry backing him up. At strong safety, Nelson is a 79. 93 speed, 94 excel. Uh, yeah, that dude's all over the field, so it's no surprise. And then Chris Bailey is the backup to uh, Nelson. We're going to cut some kickers because uh, that's a waste of space. But Wiggs is at 80, and Bruno goes up plus 5. So the team gets better, uh, you know, even after losing Jefferson and all that. Our team is overall getting better. We'll get better, especially after we add some two stars. All right, so this is the final schedule. I'm going open on the first two weeks, and I'll simulate to that point. And then, obviously, we'll play Texas State as kind of a warm-up. We're not doing FCS games anymore. And then we have Michigan. Uh, we have them coming into our house this time, and hopefully we can pull off the upset. Louisiana Tech, this is the first time we'll be playing them this season. Uh, well, in general, we'll be playing them for the first time. Uh, we'll, we'll be traveling to... Uh, Texas A&M to play the Aggies in a rematch of the uh, Cotton Bowl. And then we'll play uh, Southern Miss, Mississippi State. We'll play Tulsa. Uh, they're in an adjoining state to Texas. They're in a pipeline, so I want to play them. And then we have Ole Miss. Back to SEC play Ole Miss, UL Lafayette, Northwestern State, Auburn, and Sam Houston State in a neutral site, which is Reliance Stadium. That's where this rivalry is always played now. So, realistic in that sense. So, looks like a, a decent schedule. Pretty difficult. Uh, we basically don't have a bye week after week three, which is good. I don't want a bye week. I just want to play straight through. So, now we can set up our recruiting board. And like I said, we can recruit two stars now. Which, uh, I mean, you can find some really good two-star players. So, it's going to take a lot of scouting, but... Hopefully we can build a really good class out of this one. You can see we have some uh, three stars, but we're not able to recruit those guys yet. So, And I'm just going to recruit two stars. Only two stars. Nice. 72 free safety. This guy looks like he could play, uh, well, obviously safety, but maybe linebacker too. Oh, David Dingle. Oh, wow. That guy goes up 10 points. With the red shirt, that, that dude could develop into something. I'll have to keep him on the board for sure. Wow, that guy goes up eight points. How's that not a gem? Anyways, uh, yeah, this guy looks like he could develop into something too. Oh, nice. So we get a 68 overall tackle. I mean, red shirt him and he could end up being something good. 67 overall athlete. He looks like he'll play either offensive line or defensive line with that speed and an excel, decent strength. 
Yeah, most likely defensive lineman. But uh, he's a Juco, so won't have him for very long. 68 overall tackle. Another one of those guys that I could redshirt. D9 overall tackle. Same thing. Goes up six points. I don't know why he's not a gym, but uh, we can move him to uh, defensive end. Let him develop a little bit. All right, so this is the final board. I put, I'm put. i going to put points on the top whatever amount of guys. These are a bunch of two stars. Uh, you know, most of the guys that I'm putting points on are going to end up coming and playing with my team right away. And that's, that's the board that's full. <clears throat> Bobby Williams looks like the ideal uh, player for me. He would come in and probably play right away. And we're in the lead for him, so, you know, hopefully that uh, that works out for us. We have David Dingle, this dude, if we uh, can redshirt him, he could end up being a decent player for us. So basically, we need everything on offense. Jeez. And then defensively, we have cornerback as a need. So I have it to week three, and we have uh, filled up our board. We have Bobby Williams already visiting for this Texas State game. Um, and I'm just going to show the top guys that I put points on so I have uh, we all we have a first we're first on all these guys lists that I'm showing um, David Dingle could be a decent quarterback with a red shirt and a couple years development he could end up being a, a pretty decent player because of his arm 77 throw power 74 accuracy decent speed you know he's nothing spectacular but if you give him time to develop on the bench he could end up being a pretty decent quarterback this guy i really want him uh he could probably start right away for us but he'll probably end up redshirting because we do have young tackles right now that aren't seniors but that 92 excel with the 72 impact uh, 76 run and pass blocking that dude's gonna be decent this this guy is the same thing that would be our bookends that have to sit for a couple seasons let them develop but they could be end up being decent players this guy would probably come in and play linebacker. Uh, Jason Thurman, he would probably move to defensive end. He has all the attributes to be a good defensive end in a 4-2-5. Robert Fernandez, looks like he could be a decent uh, defensive lineman or uh, offensive lineman. Maybe even fullback. Now that I look at it, let's see. Uh, no, he's, 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 he's not a fullback. Never mind. Uh, Stephen Lane, we have points on. This guy I'm going to be putting points on as well as soon as I can get some free points. And then Blake Douglas, we need a guard. Um, this recruiting class is going to be much better, and we're going to get a lot more starters out of this one in comparison to last season. It's nothing spectacular. We're not using the low-lock cheese for all the four- and five-star players. you know. But we'll, we'll, we'll be able to add some players through this uh through this recruiting class so i'm gonna go ahead and call the episode here i appreciate you guys watching uh, i am gonna be taking a couple weeks off before season two gets rolling i'd like to improve a bunch of different aspects of the uh of the channel and that includes things like let me look it up so i'm gonna do like new sub like animations uh instead of having a graphic just scroll across I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna download Photoshop and use that for the uh, thumbnails and memes that I make. Instead of having the starting lineup scroll in as a graphic, I'm just gonna have it scroll at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna get new music. I'm gonna have a new intro that's gonna be more effective, more clean, shorter, not 18 seconds long or 16 seconds long. However, I'm gonna do new intros and outros. Uh, I'm going to improve it commentary. It's pretty difficult. USR, NTE, you know, Big C, Param, they make it look easy. It's pretty difficult to play the game well and commentate, at least for me. Uh, I'm going to try and create new storylines. The next episode is going to include the new recruits that I want to put a kind of a highlight on. This past recruiting class didn't really have those type of players. Uh, but for sure, Aaron Walker, which will be all these recruits that we kept that didn't get cut, will be getting new names. So we'll highlight them in the next episode, talk about them, uh, create some storylines behind them, 
and uh, I'll try and do more coach storylines as well, where Coach McCockner is talking to the coach uh, to his players more often. I am going to also improve how I record the Elgato and the webcam, um, and keep the you know the webcam is stationary in the way I record it now. I'd like to move it around, be able to move it around so it's not in the way of you know certain things. And then there's other things. If you have any advice, uh, any ideas, any suggestions, just leave them down in the comment section. I appreciate you all watching. Uh, later, Essentials.